Sir, did you get my message? Okay. Maybe right at two o'clock, and so we're going to go ahead and get started. If, uh, if media, you say you you're ready, then uh, then I'll say let's go. I'll give you an opportunity to let me know. No problem. We'll do that. Do I, do I need a microphone? Can you all hear me good? Everybody's good? Okay. Y'all ready? Well, uh, I really wanted to address the citizens of Selma today. Uh, and uh, I want to thank the media for coming out and giving me an opportunity to, to speak these concerns, uh, make these comments. And uh, I'm trusting and hoping that this is going to resolve and answer a lot of questions that people have been asking. Um, but eight months ago, the citizens asked me to lead us through a process of correcting and fixing government operations. Uh, I said then that doing so uh, would not be pretty. Uh, it would be like making sausage. Some of you may remember me saying that. Uh, most of us like the results, but the majority of us will not want to see the process. Well, folks, that's government. That's exactly what government is. And not only that, while putting government back together, it needs to be done in public so that everyone can see the process. And so everybody's watching the sausage being made, and I'm okay with that. Uh, it needs to be in the public. Though I regret the incident that occurred at Old Live Oak Cemetery involving Mr. Lamarcus Snow and the cemetery director, Mr. Reginald Wales, it did not start at the cemetery on that day. It actually started when Mr. Snow told the city council what he was going to do with or without authorization. It is not acceptable for any citizen to, dis, to be disrespectful to any person hired or elected to serve the public. It is concerning for anyone to state publicly that when they are going to do what they are going to do uh, on city property and dare anyone to stop them. It is unrealistic for people to conduct, uh, to condone public defiance of authority and then expect our youth to respect authority. Uh, first and foremost, as mayor, my involvement in the cemetery conflict was to de-escalate a situation uh, between what I saw as a silent department head who I didn't see say anything, and a vocal and seemingly very angry citizen. I entered that situation, I separated the parties by asking the citizen to leave, and the immediate conflict was brought under control. Uh, my actions were not to act as judge, a juror, or to pick sides, but my goal was to cool a situation down. That is exactly what I did. Now, if you judge me harshly because of that, then you have that right. However, I suggest to all of us that similar 
de-escalation tactics should be used more often and less social media, venomous language would go a long ways towards resolving conflict within our community. To say you love self and then throw gasoline on a fire makes untrue what you say and it does more harm to the community than good. Second, at the center of this matter is volunteerism. Are citizens allowed to volunteer service on public property? The answer is absolutely yes, but with respectful communications between all parties. All volunteers are encouraged and welcome. All volunteers should pre-clear their intentions with the head of the department responsible for the area of interest. There are instances when the mayor needs to get involved. And when that happens, the department head will advise and decide. This should seem obvious, but apparently it's not. Uh, but, but be clear, all department heads are held responsible uh, for what happens in areas under their authority. And there are no exceptions to that. The director over public buildings is responsible for the care of public structures and their contents. The director of public works is responsible for the care of streets, lights, etc. The director of the cemetery is responsible for the care at the cemetery. The city of Selma, we routine partner with other entities, organizations, and businesses. We have good working relationships uh, due to our respectful and productive communication and we will continue to do that on into the future. But let me remind you of something. Uh, prior to this administration, all ground crews in recreation, public works, and cemetery were cut to bare bones. The cemetery had two workers, and our cemeteries looked the part. Volunteers step in, and did at will whatever they saw needed to be done, and that really helped the city, and it helped in our cemeteries. But mind you, Old Live Oak Cemetery has highly vulnerable historic area and properties, and over that period, there was numerous complaints about damage and dislocated headstones and grave markers. People blamed city workers, they blamed the city, but virtually all of the workers in the cemetery were volunteers working to do what they felt was best, but it was with limited supervision. The markers and the headstones in our cemeteries are expensive, and to the loved ones of the deceased, their values are priceless. Uh, this administration, we understand this, we understand this clearly, and we will continue managing to the best of our ability to ensure that we know who is doing what and where. Mr. Snow stated that it was council members who gave him authorization to do what he did. Be clear, I can find no such vote of the council authorizing such action. And if the council did vote to provide authorization, as I have consistently stated before, that vote would be a policy vote and not an authorization to execute without managerial oversight at the department level. Everybody knows that the cemetery was, was understaffed. Everyone knows that the cemetery needs help. It needed help. And the former director, Mr. Kuhn, uh, he made that clear. It was clear to everyone. However, cutting grass in the cemetery is and can be a sensitive matter that can be costly for the city if properly, if any property is damaged. All department heads, all of them, have inherited some very delicate and sometimes dangerous situations. The cemetery director 
has the responsibility to manage sensitive matters in the cemetery. If citizens want to volunteer to help out, the appropriate thing to do is to simply check in. Just check in. Check in with the head of the department. Do that first. To be assigned a task or to get specific interest pre-cleared. Just let us know what you need, what you want to do and what needs to be done. Notification, authorization, and pre-clearance are needed, though not always done. Now, past conditions may have been justification for ignoring these important steps. However, those past conditions no longer exist. The department heads have the responsibility to assess uh, for needs and for risk. And the areas of the cemetery involved is very sensitive. And we all know that and we know why. Mr. Wells was simply doing his job. I realize what the citizens, I realize what you see, but be assured there's much you do not see and do not fully understand. And this is where department heads can really shed some light on this and many other high profile situations uh, that the city just cannot seem to get right. And hopefully the suggestion that I'm about to make will get us closer to our goal. Many of the department heads, they floated the idea, discussed the idea of meeting with the city council. I polled all the department heads and they all agree it is time for them to publicly speak and I am in full support of this idea. Therefore, on behalf of the City of Selma Department Heads, I have submitted a formal request to the City Council to meet with Department Heads and citizens in an open meeting for the purpose of sharing their thoughts and concerns and to hear the rationale of City Council decisions and citizens' complaints. This is a starting point. This is different. I don't think it's ever been done before. But what we have been doing is clearly not working. For the sake of our beloved self, we must fix this. We must do it together. Uh, finally, uh, Mr. Snow, he's here and I'm glad to see him. But he and I have personally met before. We met before this situation, and we've talked after this unfortunate cemetery situation. We have had a conversation. Our conversation was respectful. He and I agreed in that conversation that my intervention resolved the conflict. That's all that I did. We resolved a conflict, and we did not have, and we do not have a conflict now. Uh, at that point, or at this point, I think that we understand each other's position and we are prepared to move forward. That is my belief. That's what I got out of the conversation. The city of Selma appreciates the work that Snow's Cleaning Service has provided. I think he's done a yeoman's job. We continue to want to work with him uh, and we, we appreciate everything that he has done through both paid contracts and community service. And so now, I've said that, now I simply ask that the volume and the tone of this matter be toned down. I'm asking citizens and everybody to let's just calm down uh, and then move on to some of these more pressing issues that we have. Um, we have a national violent crime crisis. As a nation, we are in crisis. On the day this situation occurred, Mr. Snow acknowledged, and he was right, that was a murder of an 18-year-old young man that same day. It amazes me that all this attention is being placed on this. Virtually nothing has been said 
or complain about the death of another child. We are digging graves for our children every week. Come on, self. We're better than this. If we want to scream about something, let's scream about what we know about these violent crimes. If we want to scream about something, then let's tell what you know about these murders. People know what is happening. Let's scream about this before the shooting. People know when there's beefing going on. That's worth screaming about. That's worth telling about. This is where we need more communication. This is where we need the citizens' help. And I ask, I'm asking, I'm pleading, I'm praying that we will focus on these things that are really, really pressing. We're going to work this other thing out. In fact, I think it's already worked out. There's, there, I don't think there's a problem at all, at least not with me. And we accept all volunteers. And so, with that said, I will take any questions at right. this time yeah. from the press. Yes, sir. Was the Marcus Snow's activity illegal? And if he'd have chosen not to leave, would he have been arrested? Uh, the problem there was there was a conflict. A illegal no, no, though. No, no, no. Hear me out. The problem is that there was a conflict going on between a city worker and a citizen that was public, going viral and it needed some attention. There was no interest or no desire to arrest Mr. Snow. But if the, if the situation had continued, there could have been something illegally done. It needed to be addressed. And so I addressed it, and I believe that the way it was addressed resolved the conflict. It ceased at that moment, and then afterwards, I had an opportunity to talk to Mr. Snow and to Mr. Williams. I don't think we have a conflict. But it wasn't illegal before the, the director approached him. Well. It's just simple, illegal. Well, but no, it's, it's not that simple. Because, because see, the, what you're asking me is. Because, re, the reason I ask though, because U.S. Code 18 242 suggests that it's illegal for a government entity to interfere with a constitutional right. I'm just asking. A constitutional right to do what? For just the liberties. I mean, he, the, the officer or whoever, the government entity in charge. Let me ask, let me ask you a question. With, I'm, that's, that's state I, I, that's I understand, but let me ask you this question. Just let me ask you this. I want you to consider if you do. I think everybody, most of you, have been in City Hall. And if you haven't, I would encourage you to do so. And what I want you to do is instead of looking up, look down. I want you to look at the carpet. It's horrible. It needs replacing. Now, let's say you as a citizen, you feel that that needs to be done and it needs to be done right now. And so you go out and you order carpet. You back your truck up and you then come in and you, you say you fit in the lace of carpet and you don't care, ain't nobody stop you. You're gonna lay carpet in that public space. Nobody can stop you from doing it. You're gonna do it regardless of who says what. Is that acceptable? We were talking about is that, the is that acceptable? and you diverted the attention away from the question. No, 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 if no. It was I'm, illegal, I'm, giving, I'm giving a simple. I know you diverted. I'm, I'm giving, no, what I'm doing is I'm sharing I'm through, a I'm similar. I'm you. sharing a similar situation. It's it's, it's not appropriate. It's, it's, it's that kind of that kind of behavior would not be appropriate. And 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 that's all we're saying. Here. It, it, it wasn't a matter of legal or illegal. It was a question of whether it was being handled properly. It needed to stop. The situation as it was, it needed to stop. What was improper to begin with, with Mr. Snow cleaning? What was Mr. Wells' beef with him cleaning the cemetery? Well, there was, was no... Was that illegal for him to be doing that? Well, the part of the cemetery that was being worked on I don't think it's even owned by the city. And you have to consider that as well. 
you also have to consider the status of the city when it was open for all volunteers to do what they needed to do. Everybody picked up and started doing stuff. I did too. We were doing things on public property because it was needed to be done. We just did it. But now that we have management in place to do these things, and there are responsible people that we have hired to make sure that these things are done properly. It, it, is there anything inappropriate about going to the department and say, hey, listen, I think this needs to be done. Uh, we, need to, we, need to, we, need to, we need to fix this. That's all, that's all this is about. That's all this is about. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, you said you had spoken with Mr. Snow. Yes, sir. And y'all agree. Are you saying Mr. Snow now can return to work or does he need to check in? And the second question is, if the part of the cemetery he was working on may not even be owned by the city, did you or Mr. Wells have the authority to stop him from working on property not owned by the city? It's still under the city, it's still, it's still within the cemetery department. And I think the answer to that is yes, because those folks expect us to maintain the properties just like other grave owners. Every plot is owned by an individual. In the every, every plot, every plot in the cemetery is owned by the individual family that, that bought the plot. And so it's, it, it, that was not the issue. Uh, but, but, in terms of, but in terms of Mr. Stowe, yes, if Mr. Snow, uh, any volunteer, any volunteer, not just Mr. Snow, just, just have a conversation with the department here, whether it's public works, or the cemetery, or anybody, have a conversation with them to make sure that where where we're going in this is being so coordinated you, properly. So that's you spoke to Mr. Wells, and you believe that if Mr. Snow approaches Mr. Wells about I'm ready to go back to work, it's not going to be a problem. No, no, it's not going to be a problem. No. Right. No. Now this is the first time that you have, since you've uh, been mayor, made an official statement about policy on volunteers as it relates to the cemetery. It's the first time that you. Have to make that clear. Yes, it is, and uh, but you know you, you know it's one of these things where uh, you build the bicycle as you're riding it, and you know you, you know you you, you solve problem as you as you get as you as you run into. It. That's what we that's what we've done. This is this is not about. See, I, this is not about, uh, uh, and and I I regret I regret. And I said to Mr. Snow, I regret that this even happened. Uh, I said that to him, and I said, we, we can fix this. Just like we fixed other things before, we can fix this. Mr. Snow knows we've had that conversation. And he recognizes, and he said, may I respect you, and I'm gonna do it just how you, how you say you, it needs to be done. He's fine, but what's happening is, there's all this noise that's going on that really has really made this molehill a much larger mountain than it is. It really, it really is not, it is really not uh, as critical between the parties that were involved as it seems to be with people who observe it. I recognize what people have seen, but I also recognize that, you know, it would always be uh, best to wait to hear all the sides and to hear the conclusion of the matter. I, I waited an extra day just so I could hear what people were saying, to see what people were saying. I wanted to know what people were saying. How many and people do you have now that work for the cemetery? I mean, in terms of I, I'm, I'm not sure about that number. How many people you got out there now with? How many people do you have working at the cemetery? Uh, it's nine. Uh, yeah. We have nine total. And so as we head to the 4th of July, we'll probably be up. Uh, so, you know, a holiday that a lot of people probably would want to visit their loved ones at the cemetery. Uh, how does that figure in in terms of what's the cemetery? <laughs> prepared or were the workers actually getting the uh, cemetery prepared? Yes, they're, they're working every day. They're working every day. And we're getting uh, uh, getting the additional tools they need to do the work, but they're working every day, yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I never see anybody working out there, but I have to And I go there a lot. My family's there at the new library. Yes. Uh, the only person I see working is different citizens. Like my brother worked out there for a whole summer cleaning up the cemetery. Um, 
you know, we don't see any of the heads doing anything in the city of Selma. No. Our council people aren't cleaning up their area. It looks like a garbage dump all over Selma. There's go down Broad Street, burn out houses, trash everywhere. You know, we should be more proud of our city than what's going on behind the curtains that we're not seeing. I, I, I can, uh, I can, uh, uh, I can feel and appreciate what you just said. I really do. But I will, I will ask the question. Can we honestly say that this city does not look better now than it did seven months ago? Thanks to Mr. Snow in a great part, Mr. Well, Mayor. Yeah. Because the front of the YMCA, where the visitors come through our, our beautiful, sweet town that we love, and we appreciate you and everyone else, but so much disrespect for Mr. Snow has rubbed the citizens a little wrong. Well, and he is the one, yes sir, much better than seven months ago. But how much of the credit goes to citizens like Mr. Snow and other people that get out and volunteer and we're to go to the cemetery office every time we get out there and work? Well, again, um, I appreciate your statement. However, what you said totally disregarded the works that have been done by Public Works Department. I did not disregard well, our public that, that was, I you, appreciate them. I'm, I'm, I'm not here to debate you. I, I, I really I'm accept and appreciate what you said. But Mayor, ho hold on, let me let me let me finish. Let okay, me finish this. Yes, sir. Um, I listened to what you said, and what I heard, it may not be what you intended for me to hear, but what I heard was that Mr. Snow is the reason the city is cleaner than it was seven months ago. Much cleaner. No, 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 hear me, hear me out. I have said to Mr. Snow that I appreciate what he's done. We know what he's done, both for paid contracts and for volunteerism. But what I did not hear in your statement was that the planning and development, that the Public Works Department has really put their hands on the plot and have done a lot of work in this city. Mr. Higgs and his team, they really have. And every one of these department heads that are here today, they have been working their fingers to the bones for the city of South. Listen, my, my, this, this is, this is, I'm going I'm to get to your questions. I'm here, to, I'm, I'm here, I'm just going to answer questions. Listen, uh, every one of these folks, they get up every day and they work really hard with the limited resources that we have. They work really hard. My job, I want you to think about my, my job. My, I don't get out there and cut grass. I, I, I don't do the work in recreation. I'm not out there patrolling the streets with the police department. I'm not putting out fires. My job is to make sure that any obstacle for them getting their work done for you, the citizens, are removed. That's what I do. And they do the work. And so when you see me standing up defending the work that's being done by the city, it's, I'm not saying that it's work that I've done. I'm saying that these people are working hard for the citizens of Selma. And I don't think it is right, I really don't, to ignore or to discount their contributions to our, our, our city. And I would like for you to play this back and listen to it. Yes, ma'am. I've dealt with Mr. Hicks in a most positive way a few months ago. And I did spread the word and accolades for what he did to help with hurricane debris. Yes, sir. So my statement, we are here to, to discuss uh, the work that Mr. Snow has done, and I still would like to give him accolades, but if we would like uh, the public works 
I have nothing to, negative to say. They are understaffed and they've done the best they could. And for the most part, I believe they appreciate the volunteer help working alongside them. Now, I don't know if there's a conflict between our public works and volunteer workers like we had at the cemetery yesterday, but yes, Mr. Mayor, that needs to be resolved and we need to work together. I, I, as far as I'm concerned, it is resolved. As far as I'm concerned, it is resolved. Uh, yes, sir. Um, you, you, you mentioned earlier uh, about the process for volunteerism. Yes, sir. If you would, restate that in a concise manner, please. If you have a desire to change the carpet in City Hall and you want to volunteer to get that done, just check in with the people in public buildings and make sure that it's scheduled properly, that we are taking care of all of the concerns that are necessary to get it done, as an example. And let's coordinate it. Let's make sure that, that it is being properly coordinated so that uh, so that it does not conflict with any of the other things or issues or risks that may be associated with doing the job. That's what that is. And if there is a need to get further clarification, the department heads will reach out to the mayor and ask the question. They'll do that. I, I'm, I'm trying to get the media. Okay. Hold on just a little. Yes, sir. A little more specifics on that policy as it relates to communication back from department heads or the individuals who will approve volunteers being able to cut grass in the cemetery or replace the carpet or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, there have been challenges in the past with getting communication from city officials on certain things. I'm mm -hmm. not saying in the last six months or seven months, I'm saying in the past. Um, but is there a concern that some of the volunteer efforts will be hampered by the inability to get an approval from the proper channel in the city to actually be able to go out and do the work. No. And to that, to that, added to that, will there be a more clear cut um, guide maybe or statement or, or, or process issue from your office to say if you want to go cut grass in the cemetery, here's who you need to call. If you want to, you know, clean yeah, up a, around a directory call, of here. a directory, if you will. Correct. Yes. Sir. Yeah. yeah that, that's that's no problem. That's no problem. Dennis. Uh, and no, uh, I don't think there will be a communications problem in that regard as it relates to volunteering in the community. We encourage volunteerism. Uh, and, and, I, and listen, I do recognize that, uh, uh, that when I volunteer, when we volunteer, uh, we have the best interest of the community at heart. That, that's clear. Uh, but I also recognize that in our society right now, we have real trouble with authority. I, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a society issue. And what I have found in government is that as police officers are engaging citizens, there's no respect for the authority. When, and, and, and we cannot, as adults, condone that kind of behavior and response. Uh, when, when, when we see that level of, of, uh, of disrespect for authority, I mean, no, in, any of you and all of you who have been uh, bosses before, uh, there is only so much that a person in authority should take. I can submit to you, I have an ax, Mr. Snow this. But if somebody walked up on talking about they working for him and disrespected him, they won't work for him long. Now, I can guarantee you that. And that's 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 what we we need to get back to a more disciplined and more structured society. And the only place I have that I can try to contribute to that is here. And I know this change, this is change. And I know folk, I know we I know who we are, I know how we are, I know that we like to just do what we do. And, but it is, it is important if, that we put structure back in place. That's a part of fixing the government, putting the structure back in place, that we need to get things done. Uh, Dennis, let me take another one real quick. Okay, yes sir. Is the cemetery uh, uh, department and the public works 
in the public works department, are they the same or are they separate um, departments? Interesting question. They are separate, including recreation, but what we're about to do is combine them so that we can do more volume work faster. Uh, in term, not structurally combine them, but the, I guess this is a good time to talk about the kind of team that we have. The, you know, we work as a team. Now, these department heads, they are a team. And what one needs and the other one has, they go to them and they ask for it. And that's, what, that's what's going to happen now with this cleanup. But uh, I, I want the public to also remember now that we're seven months into this. It took four months, I think that's right, about four months to get the money, to get the tools, to hire the people. I mean, we did. And, and so we're three months in now. And the kind of equipment that we are ordering, I, I'm thinking that many of us know how COVID has affected the manufacturing process. There are tremendous delays. And so much of the equipment that we've ordered is coming in this month, next month. It's just coming in. And, and, uh, and so I, you know, I just want to I I just keep everything in proper perspective. I appreciate uh, the challenges, the questions, the concerns. I, I receive them, I understand them, but I came today to share uh, uh, my position on these issues. I don't think that, uh, and, and if, I, if, if anyone feels that I've been too matter of fact or too blunt, then uh, just know that I don't think that the masses of people in our community are looking for political fluff. I think they want to hear the truth. I think they want to hear what the mayor's really on, was on the mayor's mind and what and what we are trying to do to help uh, clean up our city. Uh, and that's that's what I'm trying to do. Here. Yes, sir. A couple of things. Yes, sir. You said uh, you drew a parallel between changing the carpet in City Hall and cleaning graves, and I submit to you that's not even any comparison. I don't want you to have these people so afraid that they can't go out and clean their family grave without checking in at the office. That is a ridiculous thought, and I hope that's not what you're saying. And the second thing would be, Mr. Coon struggled along with that cemetery, got in terrible shape because he had two workers. All of a sudden, you just said he has nine workers. Soon after he is gone, where did this money come from? And the comical note, and I, I'll be finished, uh, do you realize you carried yourself and two armed police officers to the cemetery to a weed eater fight? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where to start. <laughs> um, first off, um, the police officers were called before. I didn't call any police officers. There was a disturbance. Uh, the chief actually saw the disturbance. Uh, the chief witnessed the disturbance, just like everybody else did. And the chief made the decision that it was necessary to dispatch officers there to help calm the situation. Am I lying on you, chief? Okay. Um, then, uh, as it relates to uh, individuals being able to clean off their family's plots, that, 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 is, that, is, that is definitely not, not a problem. That, that, that is not a problem, that has not been a problem, that will not be a problem. Okay. No, that, 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 that's not a problem. If, you want to, if I want to go off and clean off my grandmama's plot, I don't have to call somebody to do that. That's easy to do. Well, you I don't clean several of your friends. Well, now, now I, let's not, let's not, let's not, uh, let's not get into a, 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 a word smithing issue. That would require yes. right? Well, it, it, I, I think, I think I think it is respectful to let folk know. I mean, I, I I mean, tell me what what is the problem with saying, uh, Mr. Wells or or Miss Menifee, uh, I've uh, I'm going to be out here today. Want to let you know where I'm going to be. Uh, just you know, maybe you can check on me. But as you mentioned over here, Mr. Wells is out of pocket. I got a large family and I got a lot of blocks, and I proceed. Well, well I, I would encourage you to use your own professional judgment. Use your own professional judgment. Yes, sir. I have a question. 
Yes. If I send somebody out to do my bonds, and I do that myself, mm -hmm. and I agree, there's no ever seen anybody out there, unless it's Mr. Smoke. But my question is, where are the seven days that y'all find the God? Plus, nine people, I'm sorry. Plus, um, every time you've ever been out there, At the end of the day, um, I think that all of these scenarios, we can keep coming up with different ones. Uh, all of them warrant a case-by-case -case response. We can, we can go on with this in infinitum. Uh, my, my point is, uh, everyone in here deserves respect. If, if, uh, uh, well, uh, I'm, I'm giving a summary on this issue. Everyone in here deserves respect. If I come to any of your places of business, I will respect you. You deserve that respect. When, when we enter any of the spaces where someone has the responsibility and the authority uh, over those spaces, they deserve respect also. It is, uh, it, you know, I, I don't, I don't know what else and how else to say it. The check-in plan seems to have been not very well thought out because of the difficulty of <coughs> answering this scenario. Well, it's, it's, I think that it would be a great idea for you to consider, some of the correct to consider. He's not in that office all the time. Sometimes he's in the job or wherever, out of pocket at lunch. And folks have a right to go out and clean up. That they have the right to go and clean up respectfully without having to check in. That plan, I can tell you, I don't believe it'll ever work without some controversy. Especially if Mr. Wells says, whoa, whoa, you're out there working, you didn't check in. That'll never work. So let's consider a plan. And you can do it in your own privacy and all the stuff where people are not afraid to go in the gates of that cemetery when they have time, maybe after he's not there, early morning when he's not there, and clean up. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you for the suggestion. Yes, sir. Switching gear for just a moment, you mentioned earlier about a, a, uh, a meeting that you're scheduling between or attempting to schedule between City department heads, city council people, um, and the public. What remains to be worked out with that? Do you have a time frame or a date set or a location? Or is that still in the very early stages? No, uh, a formal letter was sent to the council members requesting the meeting with a list of optional dates. Uh, we're waiting back to hear from them. Uh, what was that letter sent? Uh, it simply says that the department here has desired to meet with you. I'm sorry, when was the letter you sent? Uh, it was sent yesterday. The letter was sent yesterday. Yeah. So we're waiting for, waiting for a response for that. Uh, and um, uh, yes, sir? You never answered the money question. Where did the money come from so quickly from two employees to nine? That's out. That put me out of business. Well, um, we actually hired a lot more folk than those nine. Um, in fact, uh, every department is being restaffed. Recreation, uh, personnel, code enforcement. Uh, we've hired the people back into code enforcement. Uh, this, this misconception that the city is broke is not true. But where does the money come from? Well, it comes from the general fund of the city. It is budgeted. It is budgeted. My understanding from listening to council, council and so forth, talking to the department head, the money was not that. But if that's what you heard, that, that, that is not the case. But anyway, okay, yes, sir. It's You're a welcome. good thing that we're bringing our um, we're bringing know, people back to work. To get the work done. Hopefully we can all go back to volunteering. Yes, that's right. That's right. That is correct. And that is the spirit that I'm hoping we would embrace. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
uh, the council voted on a budget. Uh, it was a $20 million budget for this past year that they approved. And so we are hiring the people back. We are hiring the people back. City Hall, you'll see a screen on the wall as you walk into person, walk toward personnel office that has the jobs electronically posted. Um, I want to, uh, I want to, I want to point something out. We're about to end now. We're about to end now. But I, I want to point something out to you. <coughs> and, I, and I and I really appreciate this conversation. I want to point this out. Not a single question about the murder and the killing of our children. I'm, I'm, that's, a, that, that's my final comment on this. Um, yes, that, 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 that was, I mean, that, not a single question about the public safety issue. And I've said, I've said, I said in my, in the, in the, and, and I've intentionally dealt with this as the last section of this message for the purpose of hoping that it would be the first thing you would remember. Do you really think that these citizens of Selma are not disturbed about the killing of that child? It was brought up in the video between Mr. Snow, of course. I mean, and many all of us will be at the meeting tonight. That child could be laid. I, I, I am. Absolutely, everybody. I, I am. I am. My, my, sir, my concern is this, my concern is this. There are people who know before any gun is fired that there are people angry with each other and there's a potential for violence. My ask is that we speak up as loudly for public safety as we speak up on these other issues. I think that's a fair request. We need to start talking about those kinds of issues and sharing that kind of information with SPD so that we can get ahead of this situation. And, and that's, that's all I'm saying. I'm not trying to condemn anybody, but I am saying that is, I think, the priority that we should have as we move forward. And I hope that be the case. Well, Fourth of July is coming up, and I don't want to have to hear people shooting machine guns and every kind of weapon in my neighborhood, and I have to put up with that. We just had a state conference with Captain King was here, and we addressed this whole issue of fireworks and shooting guns in the city. We just did that this week. Uh, we've addressed it, and uh, we have extra law enforcement that we're bringing in to address these issues over the weekend. Uh, we are definitely increasing the amount of security over the weekend because it is a holiday weekend. Uh, and so, just know, and the other thing I want to mention to you is this. In many instances, when the police officers are called, uh, when there's shots fired, uh, I listen. I, sometimes I'll turn the scan on because I'm listening. And there's a, there's a phrase they use when they get in the area and no one will talk to them. It was negative, negative contact. And, and so what's happening is people who 
know what's happening are not telling you. We gotta talk about this. I, 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 this is this is this is a serious serious issue. This weekend there are gonna be fireworks and gunfire. It's been that way for the past twenty years. It, it, it has. It, it, and it, it was look. It, it's been this way for the past forty years. The people been shooting guns and popping fireworks in the city, and it's been illegal since then. So we really need to. This whole issue of gunfire. Uh, needs to be addressed, and I'm hoping again that we will spend more time and energy in addressing this issue. Finally, when finally, keep in mind that what you really, when, when, when police officers are doing their work, most times, if they are investigating or looking into a matter, you probably won't see them. That's the way it works. And, and, and just because you don't see them, that doesn't mean they're not there or they're not doing anything. And, and, and again, just it, it's a part of the process. Is there a public safety meeting today? Huh? Is there a public, is there a public safety meeting committee? That, there's a public today? safety committee called today at 5 o'clock. Uh, I got notice of it yesterday evening. Uh, late, I'm not sure why I got the notice uh, that late in the agenda, but I'm going to definitely try to make it. And I do have a couple of conflicts. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, the public safety, and you I understand. With most of us, on some of them, five o'clock council will leave for public safety. And those of us who have time can come back to that. Um, some of us appreciate the structure. I do. Thank you. So let's um, be clear. If, if I need to contact the cemetery directors, it's going to be in his office. If not, I want to talk to him. Yeah, very important. Starting at the time. So is he going to be there? Um, let, let, else. I'm just let, let me answer that one first. Hold your thoughts. Sure. Hold, hold your thoughts. Uh, I, I think I'm going to address this. I'm, I'm going to address it. Um, I, it's a. It's more of a. It's as much a personal matter as it is a professional. But I want to address it because, because of the stain that it's putting on Mr. Wells and his family. People drive by the funeral home where he worked. And they look through the door and they see somebody that looks just like him. But he has a brother who looks just like him working down there. We, we gotta do better. Folks, we really just gotta do better. It, 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 it's really tragic. That man is in his office every day. He's working, but there are four cemeteries that he's maintaining. So he may be at Lincoln. He, he may be at Old Live Oak or New Live Oak. Or, uh, he may be at Harris. Come on, nobody's going to stop you from picking up trash on the side of the road. Me either. That, that, that's, not, that's not what we're saying here. Come on, guys. Uh, and and uh, 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 Steve, Mr. Henry, has the website been updated yet with the cell phones of the department heads and council? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah, the department, yeah, the department Department here, phone numbers are there. The department itself, phone numbers. Department, okay. Yes, sir. All city issued phone numbers, go ahead and put their cell phones on there as well. 
City is your fault. Mayor, with a with a budget going from 17.8 to 20 plus, you ran on a position of not raising new taxes, right? Is there going to be taxes raised because of this increase? Well, now there's going to be some conversations about all of that, but keep in mind that substantial budget increase took place as a consequence of Hurricane Zeta. And, and, and the other issues that we had that we were spending a lot of money on, COVID money, much of the money is that was spent in that $20 million budget, we expect to get reimbursed. Okay? All right. You say, Mr. Mayor, before you leave, since I have been the most vocal here and I'm the most vocal Facebook out there, that I appreciate you and your help. Thank you. I was aggressively pursued uh, to go after your job before the election. Like I told him, you couldn't help it and pour it on me. I wish you had run. And I, <laughs> and I appreciate all you talking to every one of you. Yeah. Uh, you have a real difficult job. That doesn't mean there's not a lot of room for improvements. And I appreciate y'all being here. And maybe, as I said on my Facebook post, maybe something good can come from this situation. I, I think a lot of good is going to come from it. And thank you. Uh, and again, I want to thank all of you uh, for coming. Thank you all. Uh, for hearing us out. Thank you, department heads. Uh, it's making sausage, folks. It ain't pretty, but it's government. And because it's government, we have to do it in public. And uh, so uh, let's, let's continue to work on it. And maybe on the back side of this, we'll enjoy how it tastes. Amen? All right. Thank you all so very much. Let's go. Thank you.